I'm going to use the motor out of this old smart drive washing machine which I got at the dump. They have a permanent magnet type motor. Um, the stator is on the inside and that's the rotor that spins around the outside. So that's what they look like. This one has 42 coils around the outside. Some of them have 36 but it doesn't really matter you can use either. Uh, and there's magnets on the inside of that rotor. So when the magnets pass the coils, it generates the uh, electricity. But the problem is, with the factory wiring, um, if you spin it, it will put out over 400 volts and very little amps. So I'm going to rewire it so that it decreases the voltage and uh, raises the amps. So I'll just test the resistance between the phases and and make sure that there's no open circuits or shorts. 12.4. Hey, See, that's not right. We've got a bit of an issue here with the motor. 12. 12. Okay, so it was just that connector there. That's probably why. It was discarded in the first place. You can see a wee bit of corrosion in there. So I just had to push that in a bit and it connected. I think we'll improve that connection a wee bit. Alright, so the factory wiring with these is uh, 42 coils or poles and they are wired into a three phase star configuration. There's the centre, they're all joined there, and if you used it as it is to generate power as an alternator it would produce up to like 400 volts at um, 2 to 3 amps so not not really useful for charging a battery bank and uh, you can't use that to run appliances because it would just burn them out because um, the high voltage and the frequency is quite high as well so uh, we'll rewire that we'll make these strings shorter to reduce the voltage and then we'll connect the strings in parallel uh, to increase the current. There's a good website called The Back Shed. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the bottom of, in the video description. There's instructions there on how to to rewire these and uh, there's all different types of configurations so you can if you if you want to use it for a windmill it's slightly different than uh, what I'm going to do here. So I'll show you how to wire this one as 7 times 2 c and also 7 times 2c delta, so you can have it as either star or delta configuration. Star is better for higher current at low speeds, and delta gives slightly more power at a higher RPM, so um, you can use whichever one you want depending on the situation. So we'll start here, this will be number 1, the 1, 2, 3, and we'll cut the 4th, so that wire goes from there around to that coil, so cut it somewhere in the middle. And we'll do these first three. Bring those wires out. One, two, three. So we're leaving these wires here between these six poles and just cutting the ones going over top there. Should look pretty much like that. So starting here at that first terminal we count one two three four coils we cut that one that one that one so that's the first group of six and they're still joined together underneath there you see all those wires underneath. We're not cutting all the wires just those ones I've cut and then we go around to the next group of six one two three four five six we go one two three Cut the fourth, fifth, sixth. Spread the wires out. Next group of six. One, two, three, 
cut the fourth, fifth, sixth top wire and just carry on around doing that and it should look pretty much like that. Okay, so the next thing to do is clean all the enamel off these wires. What you can do is just unwrap the wire a turn, which makes it easier to do. And just scrape all that plastic off back about a centimetre all the way around the end of the wire. And that'll just make the solder stick a lot easier. I've decided to try and use a knife and it seems to work a lot better. It's quicker than the sandpaper. That's all the ends cleaned up. Looking good. So I noticed there is some corrosion on some of these wires uh, where they cross over here. So uh, what I might do is go through and put some insulation under them because Otherwise, if they, if they short out, we're going to lose quite a bit of power. So uh, it's obviously overheated at some stage, I think, and, and it's burnt some of the uh, insulation off. All right, that should do it. That's the worst of the potential shorted areas. Right, so I'm going to clean up these terminals with sandpaper uh, so I can solder the parallel um, bus wires to those. Just makes it easier to solder. So I'm going to use quite a large wire here to connect up the groups of coils. I'll just solder the wires to here, um, cut a bit of the insulation off, wrap the wire around and just solder it. And it'll go all the way around here and connect up to here at the end. So first of all I'll measure it out and mark it. Quite important to use heavy wire if you're going to be generating quite a bit of power because otherwise the wire will just heat up and possibly burn out. So it's going to this one. So we'll call that X. And this one here will be Y. And this one will be Z. One, two, three, four, five, that one. One, two, three, four, five, that one. One, two, three, four, five, that one. If I was rewiring as a star configuration, I would be tying all these wires together, those ones and those ones, all the long ones basically. But because I'm going to do star delta, um, I'm going to leave those free for now and they'll be connected to bus wires as well. So it's, it is a lot easier doing it as star, but um, delta, star delta gives you more options, especially if you have. Um, like different times of the year, our, the stream is going to be um, lower flow, so that's when the star will be useful. And, and the rest of the year, we can use delta where it's uh, running at a higher RPM and it'll peak a wee bit higher. Just coming down to the copper and um, being careful not to cut the actual copper wire. So I've got some soldering flux here and a little paintbrush so I can just brush it on there and it'll make the solder stick a wee bit better. problem with this solder iron, it gets heavy after a while. So I'm just putting it on the gas burner to keep it hot. 
keeps its heat for a while. That's a big chunk of copper on the end. One down, five to go. Same again, mark it out, cut the insulation and join the next row on there. So we just go around again, doing the same thing, um, soldering each wire back from the last join. So that one will go on there. So that's two done. One more on that one. Okay, so if we were making a star stator, we would wire these three coils, those three coils together, go all the way around doing that, and then that would be that stator ready to go and, and just clip these wires off. But I'm going to carry on and do a delta um, stator today, so I'll be doing the same thing as we did there, but with these wires. So that one, that one, that one all connected to bus wires just like that. So three more and then we'll have a delta stator. So this end will just be free and that will go into a junction block later on. Two more to go. mark all these wires so I don't get them mixed up. Z, Y, X, so that one is Z1. And then Y1 is the next one. X1 is that final. X1. 
There's nothing shorting out there. Two point four. Two point four. Two point four. That's all good. So now I know there's no shorts or open broken wires. I can go ahead and glue these down to where they need to be, just to set everything in place so it's not moving around. Some people use cable ties to do this, but I find the cable ties tend to pull the wires too close together and they've got a chance of like shorting out. So I just find with the glue you can you can keep that space between the wires and um, less, less likely to short out then. It doesn't look pretty, but um, I've never ever had a trouble with one of these uh, shorting out. Just go around and make sure that there's a few millimetres of clearance between each, each wire and if there isn't you can just make a bit of a gap and then glue it in place to, to keep it there. Alright, that should do it. So I can actually trim up the ends of X1, Y1, Z1. So we won't need those. We'll only need X, Y, Z here. That leaves us with X. X will be that one. So I'll label that. This is a lot more complicated to do the, um, the star and delta in one stator. So it's, it's quite a tight fit. It's a lot easier just to do the star configuration, which is fine for most um, 12 and 24 volt applications, but because we're going to have more water flow in winter, uh, we want about to have the delta there just uh, to get a few extra amps out of it. But it is, it is quite a tricky one to wire up. If we want to have this wired in star, um, all we do is we connect X1, Y1, Z1 together with the terminal block and then we just use these connectors here to go to the rectifier and these can just be, these are left open. Okay, I'll wire it up for um, delta configuration. So X1 goes to Z, which is that one. Y1 goes to X. And last one is Z1 to Y. So that's delta wired up. It's not the prettiest thing. I mean, it's it's quite hard to do delta tidily. I find um, if you're just doing star, it's a lot easier. But delta, there's a lot of wiring in there, and it's got to be sort of kept pretty low so that you can still bolt it onto the back of the tub. So we'll go and put that in and um, test it. Okay, so we'll connect up the stator to the rectifier. It doesn't matter which way around they go, they're all the same. So that's three phases to the rectifier, and then from the rectifier to the battery bank. 